about good old fashioned external beam, like broad scale radiation for prostate, right. um, which you and I talked earlier about that it's really something that's used mostly in combination with other treatments. So tell me about that. So external beam radiation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's about 40 treatments that someone with prostate cancer would undergo where they radiate the whole pelvic area. Uh, At a lower dose than they do. Lower dose or the right. effective dose mm -hmm. known, known in grays. Mm -hmm. So certain amount of grays is the unit right. that's used and it depends on each particular case what that dosage is. Um, oftentimes external beam radiation is combined with uh, androgen deprivation therapy or what's called hormone deprivation therapy, which is really chemical castration. So, they, um, so the physician will do two things. They will reduce the testosterone levels to almost zero. So they basically block the production of testosterone. Correct. Block the production of testosterone, radiate. And I have to say that the literature, the scientific literature does show that there's um, uh, less mortality that's prostate specific from that combination than just from radiation alone. Now the testosterone uh, deprivation therapy, or the ADT, let's just call this different right. names, ADT for androgen deprivation therapy, um, that's, that can be a short-term scenario where they, they'll, they'll be an, on ADT for one to two years after, before and after radiation. Is this and like then, the male version of tamoxifen? Correct. Okay. Correct. For, for women for breast cancer where they suppress the estrogens. That's right. Right. That's right. And so that's that. And, and in terms for, of how effective uh, external beam radiation right. is, um, combined with androgen deprivation therapy, that's kind of what every radiation oncologist I think would at this point recommend mm -hmm. as opposed to a standalone treatment. Um, so you would never do just external beam radi radiation? With very few exceptions. Without something there are else. some situations where the patient says, I'm not doing, I'm not getting castrated at at no cause. And then some doctors will say, okay, understand, you know, the literature right. says this, this, then that. They'll still radiate on the right patient. But for the most part, they'll do both. So you're saying, you're calling it castration, which is a rather permanent extreme kind of word. When they do the testosterone suppression therapy, yep. is that permanent? Or are you saying that they do it for, for a year us. or two and then they bring it back? It's only permanent for as long as for as long as they are on this type of treatment called androgen deprivation therapy. Okay, so it's Once not they're off of it, then castration. testosterone just starts right. elevating naturally again. Okay, and any other health levels. impacts though? Because testosterone, all of our hormones do many things in our bodies. So any other kind of risks or risks that crop up or side effects of suppressing testosterone? Absolutely, right. there are risks. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you bring your testosterone to, uh, to zero or almost zero, there are there is less uh, sexual interest or low low libido. There is erectile dysfunction, but even more so than that, more grave than that, there is a high probability of just mortality from heart disease. There's more bone loss uh, or more osteosporosis, uh, what's called demineralization of bones, mm -hmm. um, which men uh, older men have a 37 percent risk of dying from a fractured bone after a certain age. So osteosporosis in general, in, in even general, before because general, of the reduced testosterone In general, levels. correct. Right. So now with this type of treatment, you reduce, you increase the risk right. of osteosporosis, which is a big deal. Um, I have to say, based on the scientific literature and my experience with certain exercise um, regimens and dietary protocols uh, from the Kaplis method, the, a lot of these men still do well. They, they still, so they get the treatment and they don't, they're not, you know, they don't succumb to osteosporosis or the other thing they, they succumb to is a metabolic syndrome, which is high triglycerides, high cholesterol, big waste, um, high blood glu glucose right. levels, high uh, hypertension, uh, or high blood pressure, and that increases the risk of just early mortality. So when men get castrated chemically or physically, still happens, Yes. Physical, physical castration We're is We're not going to talk about that now because I don't want to know why they're doing it. <laughs> well, for prostate cancer reasons. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's still for the same <laughs> reason. Like, Is there <laughs> some sick cult someplace? <laughs> right. right. It can be in this right. day and age. Um, the increase of risk of metabolic mm -hmm. syndrome in, in these type right. of men or this ma male population, which increases their risk of early mortality as well from so other on the, things. So on the scale of treatments, this sounds like would be relatively low on the scale of what are the, what are the first things that I'd want to do to treat my prostate? Every case is different. Right. Every interest uh, or patient interest right. is different. It has to be individualized, what patient gets what. I'll say this. The two treatments, out of all the treatments, there's probably mm -hmm. half a dozen treatments for prostate cancer, maybe more. 
um, the two that have the most data, scientific data, is prostatectomy and which is surgery, which is surgery and a removal of the prostate mm -hmm. and uh, external beam radiation. So for better or for worse, we have more data knowing, hey, how effective is it, it, it is and what are the adverse and unwanted side effects from but it. But definitely have to manage and monitor those side effects and perhaps do other lifestyle things to offset them. And the, and the lifestyle things right. are very powerful. I don't want to uh, undermine right. that factor. It's right. very powerful, uh, not only from my experience, but also from the scientific data. So you want to do both. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gio. My pleasure. If you liked what you just saw, we have a whole lot more with Dr. Gio Espinoza at our website, bottomlineinc.com. And do me a favor, share this, tell your friends. We have so much great information. Come to bottomlineinc.com.